And we're live, pal. Welcome, everyone, to another live stream. This one is running on Patreon Power. Joining me is uh, Adam. Hi. And Gaz. Hello. And we are talking tonight. This is one of Adam's suggestions for a stream discussion. Uh, what if Sunbow had continued with G.I. Joe and Transformers? I like the idea of talking about both of them because I kind of feel like they would have we would have gotten that crossover. Um, but yeah, let's uh Adam, why don't we kick it off with you? What direction do you think the shows would have went? And I just want to quickly say hey to Zazel, shot you a uh private message over on Instagram if you want to join us on this one too. Uh the link is in there. Obi uh invited him on, but unfortunately he's too busy. Would have loved to have seen a crossover uh, between these two shows, but only if Sunbow did it. Yeah, we'll we'll get into that. Um, the the people who love the Deke Joe, awesome, keep loving it. Don't watch this stream. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're free to love it. We're you know some of us here are free to not. And Chad, thanks for joining us. Foolish uh, habit. Thank you for joining us, uh, Adam. What do you think would have happened with those shows? Uh, I guess with with, with uh, GI Joe, I know in the last, I think it was the last episode, regular episode. I think it was Into Your Tent. I will silently creep. They sort of hint at Cobra Commander trying to take control back over Cobra and forming a new group called the Coil. And I've read before that that was sort of the idea originally for if they had done a season three that. Um, there would have been this group called the coil, but it actually would have been run by Tomax and Zaymont and been more of a crime syndicate rather than a military organization. So, so I'm sure at some point they would have tried to bring Cobra commander back, uh, or in, into human form. So it's, it, it's interesting. Like I, I knew this was going to happen. It's fun to talk about, but we're going to end up with some similarities to what happened yeah. with the Deke Joe show and I guess it's the trilogy of Japanese anime headmasters, yeah. master force victory. So, I mean, there isn't too much they can deviate like for transformers headmasters. I mean, that's, or power masters. I mean, they have to be included, but what we're mainly talking about is like some of the storylines. Uh, that is very interesting. Cause for me, what I would have loved to have seen happen with the Joe show, and it very well might have, is uh, Buzz's uh, book that he wrote a few years ago for Kindle Worlds. Uh, did you ever read that one, Gaz? Uh, no, I have not. Most Dangerous Man in the World. And it's harder to get these days than Gary Hart's book. Although <laughs> Gary Hart's book, there's an, um, an AI um, audiobook reading on YouTube. So someone needs to to put buzz's book through one of those readings maybe or or just read it um and put it up in a youtube video but um it's entirely possible like if buzz had still been on the team it might have gone in the direction of that book which was basically what adam just said um the most dangerous man in the world is the guy who started cobra and so it kind of got screwed up along the way because um for anyone who's listened to the commentary I did with Buzz about the G.I. Joe movie, he had this concept of this guy who started Cobra. And then they went, by the way, there's a Cobra Emperor. And he went, <laughs> he went, no, there's not. <laughs> and they said, yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, there is. And uh, then they told him, oh, by the way, there's a, uh, oh, he came up with Cobra Law. Um, but that wasn't really an idea he wanted to go with. But like that ended up totally sidetracking his idea of the most dangerous man in the world. So, I'm thinking like retcon. Uh, it's a necessary evil to just kind of let's let's move past the Cobra Law thing and um, pretend it was a, a dream. I mean, got to go the dream route with that because the whole point is this other guy started it and Cobra Commander stole it, which mm -hmm. I think doesn't take anything away from Cobra Commander. It's like, well, yeah, of course he's a conniving con man who stole this he, he's not competent enough to start this but he sure as heck it sounds like him he, he could steal this organization and he's locked this guy up all these years he's there locked up in a terror drome <laughs> so buzz's book is about this guy escaping and so cobra going uh-oh we need to get him and gi joe going 
But the guy who started Cobra, uh-oh, we need to get him. And so it would have Whoa. made a really interesting season of like everyone is trying to get this guy and I can't reach him, but Overlord. That's the figure I would have made this character, Overlord. Everyone's yeah. after him. So it, it, it would be more of a more of an adult car, uh, show as opposed to geared towards because even though even though the show wasn't really geared to kids really because they don't they dealt with adult themes in the show so yeah that's why we're fans 80, of yeah. it I right. mean that's why there's such a huge adult fan base of Transformers and GI Joe because he man God bless him you know great lessons and stuff but a lot of adults can't sit and watch that stuff again because it was more geared towards nurturing forming the minds of young children gi joe and transformers was they were the cool shows that weren't trying to be wholesome and nurturing and you know despite the now you know uh things and stuff it, it was seriously like transformers was melancholy and gi mm. joe was military so right those just felt like the cool grown-up shows and haven't talked to buzz a few times him and the team weren't trying to dumb it down and it didn't seem like there was that much pressure on them to dumb it down or, or kidify it up like the Deke team, unfortunately. Yeah. And there was, uh, I think, an instance where Buzz uh, was um, it was possible for him to write one of the Deke shows and, and they just couldn't come to an agreement. But like, I can't imagine him being able to write a Deke show because Buzz has his style, the Sunbow style that so many of us love so much. And I, I just see him going guys why and deke <laughs> just going toys that's why sell toys and we've got a run in we got zazel on the show there howdy you all thank you for joining <laughs> us zazel. good to talk to you again yeah good to see you buddy good to see you guys good to see you how are you guys uh i haven't i haven't met this other individual though hi i'm adam zazel adam, Hello, adam, adam. Zazel. <laughs> nice to meet you good to meet you buddy uh do you know gaz I know a lot about you, Gaz. You've been acquainted, <laughs> I hear. I think everyone knows Gaz. <laughs> um, David, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, Operation Dragonfire was the best Deke episodes of G.I. Joe. There's a lot of other comments, and sorry if I can't get to all of them. Um, this always happens when uh, I have people on here. It's, uh, it's more about the chat happening here than the comments, but uh, rest assured, after we're all done here, I, the next day I will go through them and and take a look at all of them um we got a deke lover <laughs> deke was crap i don't even count that as gi joe it's hard for me too as much as i love joe and when i've seen every sunbow episode the 10th time i, I want to go and at least something fresh and i try deke and i just don't know why they all sound like this <laughs> i don't know you tell I, me i, I tried to watch i try to watch the deke i couldn't i I had a hard time getting through all of them. I wanted to watch them all to see, to, you know, to experience it. And the only story that I liked was the, the, the first mini series that was operation dragonfire. Same here. The most sunbow, yeah. sunbow, sunbow, uh, of that whole series. Everything else I think was even, even Zazel's favorite episode. <laughs> Sarge being kidnapped in a football game going on. But, <laughs> in commando. Uh, yeah. Other than like that, dragonfire. I mean, Dragonfire is the one that runs on Sunbow fumes. Yeah. 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 And yeah. then after that, they, they fill the tank with Deke unleaded. And that, <laughs> that's all you get. But like even the music, they were using some of the Sunbow music. And they, they were doing impressions of the Sunbow actors for the ones they couldn't get. So that, that's the closest one. That's like, that's, that's a glimpse of what, what we could have had. Revert Cobra Commander back into a human that that one's worth the watch that five parter for sure yeah i don't know if you guys know this about me but i'm a pretty big sergeant slaughter fan Didn't know so that. i think i think he gets a pass for me because it is so sarge heavy that uh i i can sort of see see through the through the fog and uh, uh look at the little gems and nuggets within uh but operation dragonfire probably is the best of the deep stuff, but there are some gem episodes throughout. It's just a lot of filtering through before you can get to them. Yeah. Falcon, you're on drugs. <laughs> yeah, that's not one of the good ones. <laughs> but um was, go ahead, guys. I was, I was just gonna, gonna ask say you. I was gonna say, um, the way I, I see it going or 
would have gone after the movie. Um, obviously the remnants of Cobra Law being taken care of. I mean, you'll have little stories there. You mentioned the coil, which which that would be an interesting add to the to like this series, a new series. Well, the continuation of the series, but with like it still has to push the toys at that time in the eighties. So I, I would I was thinking about it earlier today, and I'm like I'm like the defiant. I can see Joe's going into space, having yeah. some space adventures, maybe battling on the moon and the solar system and stuff. I thought that would be a kind of a cool, you know, bringing it to a sci-fi era a little bit. Yeah, that's <clears throat> a very interesting thought. I have never thought about that, and it's weird. I don't think the defiant is in the Deke series. I don't think it ever shows up, does it? You no, could you could center know, a whole different. show around the defiant like that's mm -hmm. season whatever it would have been two three four I don't know how they decide you know, I was what, I was image I was imagining that uh, what was it the poster or like the cover of the catalog where it had the yeah it had defiant had had uh was it fast straw it had Falcon and a couple other couple other characters and I'm like those would be the main characters and like they were pushing uh, what's his name. Repeater Falcon. as like the face oh. too, right? Because he was on a lot of the merchandise stuff, like the cuffs, the party yeah, plates, and stuff yeah. like that, right? So and those Hardball. characters, yeah, and Hardball, and those characters would be like in the forefront, I would imagine, as in like season two of GI Joe, where it was Flint, Lady J, and a lot of those characters being in the forefront. Yeah, I got the image right here. Share screen. Taking the um, defined into space makes more sense than. Sky Strike yeah. is going in space though. And <laughs> that happened in Sunbow. We can't ignore it. <laughs> sure enough. I don't want to ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just imagining like like a Sunbow series with those characters, you know, and maybe maybe the way you described it as as uh or was it Mike that described it as uh Tomax and Zaymot running the coil and then Cobra um trying to rebuild itself. Trying to find a way to re, yeah. you know, bring Cobra Commander back to man because now some Pentor's gone. That's and a of good idea. Destro and the Iron Grenadiers. Oh, yeah, that's man, what a missed nice opportunity. We could do episodes yeah. where it's not always about Cobra. It could be about Destro. It could be about right you know, something else. You know, uh, pushing Overlord as the uh, as the main bad guy in the commercials for a little bit. Yeah, I kind of like in the guy from. Um, I know this would be like in the '90s, but uh, what's his name? The one comes a, a cesspool, right? He's got the big scar on his face. Yeah, I think I like that guy as a as like a lead bad guy. Yeah. Um, um, Cobra building Overlord. I wonder if he means like constructing him, like out of DNA, like Serpentor. Would be an interesting. I think I mean line. building it, building that character up. Oh, uh, like Buzz as, is the um, most dangerous man. Yeah. Well, I liked Overlord. I thought he was. Um, I thought it was a good looking bad guy, mm -hmm. right? He's got, he's got a bit of a monocle thing happening. Uh, he's got that, so he's, he's like a, a cross between Cobra Commander, uh, Dr. Mindbender, maybe even a little bit of Serpento with that little chariot thing that he has. Yeah. Uh, but I think I, I, they gave him at least three spotlight commercials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. two, two with Sarge uh, as a uh, live action foil for him, which I thought was great. But again, I'll, I'll think anything Sage does is great. Here's a look at Overlord for folks who aren't um, familiar with him, courtesy of 3D Joe's. <clears throat> yeah, all he needs is a cape and a cod piece. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mindbender is looking at this guy going, so disappointing. <laughs> at least his arms are visible. But yeah, the monocle. He is a good looking figure. He is a good looking figure. Yeah. Fragile. Gold plastic oh, syndrome, yeah. apparently. Oh, yeah, really? yeah. I just a little bit of mine. Of it. <laughs> it could have been like the rebuilt Cobra Commander. Mm. Yeah, I like that idea, idea, though, guys. I like the idea of the of the Defiant and just taking it in space. And maybe that was the way to go because, like, I know we want things to go forever, but like we had some some good seasons and lots of episodes of the military thing, and things were going more sci-fi uh, at that time. And so, like, yeah, blast off into space. I don't know if they would be fighting aliens. That might be too hokey for the G.I. Joe universe. But just the space crew and, and kind of 
don't worry, the Joes are still out there. They can make cameos, kind of like He-Man would be brought in on the She-Ra show. They're still out there doing their thing. But for the most part, the the stars would be the Defiant and, and the guys that were mentioned on the poster. You know, Falcon is in charge of the Defiant. It's not necessarily going up in space every time, but they could be attacking the Defiant, and we got to protect it. But you got your space crew, too. And then that, I know um, Star Brigade isn't all that popular in uh, the G.I. Joe fandom, but... I mean, it's a different direction. It's something else. It's it's like a reinventing of the brand. I think it was I think it was on a Joeberg episode. They were talking about Robo Joe and making him like a futuristic Joe that comes into the past, kind of like Cable in the X Men. Hmm. Okay. That would be a little oh, twist. Yeah. That's a neat idea. Cable is my favorite. Like I'm uh, I I've only seen the first two episodes of X Men '97, so not to spoil for anyone. And I don't know what's happened. How many more episodes have come out? But it seems like my hopes are up that Cable, in his comic form, is going to be joining the show. Because, like, yes, bring that. That's that's something really interesting to do with the storyline. Give us like it was cool seeing Cable in the original X Men cartoon, but he was just some dude who who could disappear, right? Teleport. And, and when I saw him in the old show, I was like, "There's so much more to this character. What are you doing?" Right. What do you, yeah. this guy is the crux. He's the he's the fulcrum of the whole thing. Him and Strife. Like, what are you yeah. doing? He's just some dude. Cable. It's just some dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was a big so, cable fan. Cable fan uh, in the nineties, early, early, early nineties. Uh yeah, cable cable I think found his uh his real stride. Um stride is also a cable reference. But uh he, he did he did uh, him and uh Strife I think were were a great duo, a great foil. And I loved execution of the song. But this is not an X-Men chat I could go on about. <laughs> I got another Deke fan here. It's not watchable at all. It's for five year olds. Animation was horrible to agree. They didn't know what they had. I mean the people who yeah. were working on that just didn't didn't Which, realize how special it was and so felt no um they felt no responsibility to uh preserve that specialness and it's funny christy marx wrote an episode of the deke show it didn't help you know like <laughs> there were some sunbow actors who worked on the deke show it didn't help it, no. it's just the the overall creative force behind that show just had a different motivation it seems like the Sunbow shows, G.I. Joe, Transformers, even the other stuff that wasn't as successful, <clears throat> it wasn't like selling toys is the be-all, end-all. No. And, and Buzz would say, like, we didn't always get a list of this toy must be in it, that toy must be in it. Like, they had freedom. Whereas the Deke was just, a you know, a commercial, sell toys. Which kind of which blows me away because they did Mask, didn't they, and Inspector Gadget, which are great shows that I can watch it now. Mask is great. Yeah, that's the yeah, weird yeah. thing. <laughs> the it's animation on it is especially good. And and real Ghostbusters was deep. Right, yeah, yeah. that's right. And it's one yeah. of the funniest shows up there with the tick ever made. Like animated shows. Is G.I. Joe the worst Deke cartoon ever? Can't be. What else did they do? They did a lot of stuff. They did uh yeah. chat, let us know. <laughs> we got some deep letdown. The, uh, uh, we got a Transformers uh, comment here. I wish Transformers, we can talk a little bit about <clears throat> the Autobots and Decepticons, had continued at least two or more years so we could get Headmasters and Target Masters and the Pretenders. Ah, with uh, Norm McDonald there as a, as a Metal Hawk there. <laughs> <laughs> Double Target Masters, Junior Headmasters, and Power Master Prime. So <clears throat> if Sunbow had continued Transformers, let's say Rebirth was an odd short season, four that would have been four and if sunbow had said you do season five now you, you gotta think like it would be pretty similar to what headmasters ended up being or master Force. well it would have been probably completely different than master force i don't think um no. on, on master force it was little humans controlling like lifeless vessels and i would think like sunbow would do something more like the the comic where it's like they're bonded and they get to argue with each other and and stuff like that. You don't think they would have taken it back to like basics with the Transformers? Like make them sentient beings and just helping the humans? 
yeah. kind of like when they were in space, right? They, um, the Transformers movie was in the future, obviously. And I mean, I know that the continuing series were as well. But I mean, like, you think they focus back onto that where the viewer has some sort of connection to the to the characters, maybe even taking it back. Like back, back to basics. To like, yeah, back to basics, back to that original, that the, like the original season or two seasons where they're here on Earth. Probably, because a lot of shows do that. When they get a little long in the tooth and ratings start to drop, they go, well, we got to get back, go with what brought us to the dance. Mm-hmm. And they... I mean, even the toy lines do it sometimes. Let's get back to basics. So rehash, some people might think, but like, what's the alternative? Do you want something completely out in left field? And, you know, like, do you want Cobra Law? Or do you want G.I. Joe Mass Device rehash? I'm like Cobra Law comes back as some sort of like, like, what was his name? Burgess Meredith's, Meredith's character comes back as some sort of like cybernetic Galobulist. being. Yeah, they, like they I rebuild him. I so wanted an Inhumanoids um, Cobra Law crossover. That would have made. That would have been cool. I think. I think. They, I think what they could have done, and this goes back to uh, heading up into space. A good segue would have been that they're they're up there making sure all the spores have been you know wiped out. They're not. There are no risks of coming back down to Earth, right? Great idea. So that's them out in space, but don't make it a whole season. Go back to the mini series formula where they began. Yeah. Do a five part mm-hmm. mini series, and I think. Uh, even do that to the Transformers. Don't do the, the, the three episodes, not enough, right? Mm-hmm. But if you want to focus on a set of uh, action figures in that time period, I don't know, I can't really remember what came after um, Headmasters. Maybe Pretenders? Uh, Power Masters were after Headmasters. Masters, right. So then do a, do a five-part miniseries about that and have it, because um, they pretty much, they put a pin in, in what happens with Cybertron at the end of that three-parter, right? Cybertron's mm-hmm. back. It's, a, it's back to its glory days. Golden age, yeah. yeah. Whereas the in the Japanese over. show, they blow it up. Right. <laughs> they well, went yeah. in a different direction. <laughs> it's fine. Gone again. <laughs> See you later, Brian. It's gone, and Rodimus was like, well, I'm, I'm See leaving. See you later. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here, guys. I'm taking blow with me. Sorry. Uh, we, were, we were too late. Didn't they blow up Mars, too? They blew up Mars? In, in, headma- in Headmasters? I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> But they kill off a bunch of people too. Magnus gets killed off. I don't yeah. think we would have seen that in the Sunbow show. Not in like a no. weekly, maybe in another theatrical movie, in something big, a spectacle like mm-hmm. that. But I don't think we'd be seeing Magnus die. I mean, Blaster died, but just to be recolored as whatever he was, Billy. <laughs> I forget what they <laughs> called him. Sound Sound Blaster. Twin cast. Yeah. Twin cast. That's it. Thank you. Soundwave was Sound Blaster and Twin Cast. So they, I don't, they, didn't, uh, they didn't kill Grimlock off, did they? No. I don't think he even appeared in Headmasters. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Not really. But yeah, I'm, I'm thinking like the similarities to the Headmasters show, it probably would have been very similar. They would have went the, the route that Bob Budiansky went with a comic, which is, I got it in there somewhere. Um, but yeah, back to basics. Like it's basically Fortress Maximus says, I- I'm done. I'm burnt out, guys. I'm leaving. If you want to come with yeah. me, come along. This has all happened before. It goes to Nebulos with a bunch of guys who are burnt out. The war comes there, and yeah. then they're like, "Well, I guess we have to fight." Except the the little gimmick. But the, I'm a bit fuzzy on 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 a lot of stuff that happened after the Sumbo stuff. They they brought back Optimus, but then he went like he got some sort of virus and died, right? For the universe again, right? Is that what happened? Did um, they ever bring him back after that? In this in the uh, Japanese shows. He yeah. died again in Headmasters. Or well, uh, so he, I think he like merged with Vector Sigma, I think. They with the virus, he he heal he cures the virus with the matrix. He doesn't die in the American show after that. Yeah. In the American show, he ends up on the headmaster show and he's just kind of a fifth wheel. Which um, it, it basically but, means he dies again if they destroyed <laughs> Cybertron, right? <laughs> um, so oh, so damn. So, <laughs> so Sumbo would start off with a bang and it'd just be Optimus coming back. Yeah. In, right, the, Optimus. in the Japanese show, they kill him off pretty early in the Headmaster show. And then that's it. He's he's done. Um Power Master Jinrai shows up. That's not Prime. He looks mm-hmm. exactly like Prime because it was a body built for Prime at one time. Mm-hmm. So they built <clears throat> Convoy in Japan, as he's called. Yep. They built him a new body so that he could 
download into it someday. Never got around to doing it. So this new Power Master body just sat there. And then this human named Jinrai finds it one day, gets the engine suit, which lets him control the body. So now he looks a lot like Prime, but he's not Prime. So it's kind of like a wink, like, look, it's it's not Prime, mm -hmm. even though it's it's clearly Prime, but it's not Prime. So that's like the Japanese people who grew up on that show and on that toy. They look at Power Master Prime and go, that's not Prime. I don't know why you think that's Prime. That's clearly not Prime. And us over in North America see it and we go, how is, that not, how is that not Prime? <laughs> it's, it's Prime. <laughs> but it's it's not like it. There was no life to the body. It's just a power suit for a, a dude named Jin Rai. Maybe they could have done a, a sort of a, a Generation 2 cartoon with, um, what are they called? Like the Turbo Masters? And, oh, those were great. Um, I would have loved to see. That's another back to basics. Like, yeah, Thunderclash and his Turbo Masters could have been retelling the story again. Like, we, we've had it. We're going to find a peaceful planet. And just, again, like a small group of Autobots, a sm small group of Decepticons. It's G2 a, Megatron. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, <clears throat> now, who mentioned like the return of Megatron? Someone had mentioned, I, I've got a message I need to go through here. I kind of thought that if they had continued with Galvatron being the, the main villain, they would have to address his insanity somehow, right? Because it seemed like it got worse and worse throughout the series. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. I, I talked with Sean one time, Sean Fuster, and he brought something up to me that I had never noticed before, but he's 100% right. I don't think it's a theory. I think it's it's clearly there in the writing. Galvatron's nuts for season three. You remember there's an episode, I think, called Web World, where, where they say this guy, he's more than we can handle. He needs therapy. He needs something. <clears throat> so right. they take him to this planet where they heal psychopath creatures. And so they decide we can't. He's incurable. We need to basically do a lobotomy on him. And they, what is it? The, they drill into his head or something. The planet connects to him because the planet's alive. And he drives the planet crazy <laughs> or <Yeah>. something. <laughs> and he ends up destroying the planet. <laughs> He's like, I've had it with you, planet. <laughs> so, and then he goes about his business. And then um, the return of Optimus Prime happens and rebirth happens. And I never noticed a difference. But Sean said, did you notice he's a little less insane after the mm -hmm. procedure? <clears throat> so I said, no, I've never noticed that. But I went back and watched it. And he is right. Yeah. He, after he's freed by Cyclonus, who feels bad, like, oh, this was a bad idea. Follow me. I know what to do. This is a different tone than he yeah. has been the entire third season. He's confident. Mm -hmm. He's clear. I'm, I mean, he's still destroying a planet, but he's clear and confident. Return of Optimus Prime. Same deal. He's not as off the handle, hit people, hit his own guys, blast his own people. That's and then true. in Rebirth, again, he's more Megatron than mm -hmm. Crazy Galvatron. So <clears throat> um, in a new, like in the, another Sunbow um, series, someone else mentioned this to me. I need to find a message. But they could have um, went with the return of Megatron. Like make that a whole, maybe a five-parter. The yeah. return of Megatron, how Galvatron becomes Megatron again, and not time travel like the comics did, but so, him reverting yeah. back. Go ahead, guess. Maybe, maybe he's maybe he's got some sort of problem because Megatron's in there trying to take over, and Galvatron's fighting That's him the whole way. So cool. he's like fighting himself inside. Yeah, there you go. And then he becomes Megatron in the new Sumbo series, therefore uh, causing Prime to come back. Maybe somehow they remove the Megatron personality and give him a new body. The G2 Megatron, maybe. The know. tank body. Go. Yeah, that would have been cool. Um, so I found the message. It was from Dominic. Uh, he couldn't make it tonight, but he said, uh, as cool as Galvatron was in the 86 film, I think it would have uh, really started. Um, I wanted to see uh, Megatron return. So that that was that was his idea. Like, let's see how that happens, and not don't just make it a quick one part or one episode, but make it a stretched out five parter of like this is happening, and you could like the scenes of Prime talking to Alpha Trion and the Matrix and that stuff. We could get the Decepticon equivalent of that 
Galvatron talking to Megatron. They could be fighting each other mentally, metaphysically, mm. rather than, you know, in the comic, that was interesting, the time traveling thing, but that's that's often the answer. Like, how do how are we going to explain this? Time travel. Um, yeah. But to actually so, have, you know, the, the personality yeah. want to take over. I think one of the things that they didn't lean into enough with the show was the robots in disguise. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the, we lost your that. robots in another country, your robots in disguise, they pretty much put themselves out there and say, okay, we, we exist here on earth. But just because you're, just because you're a truck one day doesn't mean that next day you can't be something else. Like they had the technology to reformat their look. So I was like, all right, the prime, you're, you're a little bit too obvious now as a, as this truck, what else can we make you? Um, and the, and the same with just about every transformer is that you you don't have to necessarily bring in new characters as new toys. Just say, okay, they're not a truck anymore, or they're not a car anymore. We can we can re we can reformat this stuff. And I, I like the aerial bot, but anyone could have been aerial bots if they really wanted to. Mm. Just get Teletron one to to go. Okay, we need to be planes now. They they rule the skies. Who wants to put their hand up and be a jet? <laughs> That's true. David, thank you again for uh, the super chat. Uh, they should have dropped an iceberg on Galvatron like they did in Headmasters. That was another fatality. Galvatron mm -hmm. got uh, killed by ice again. Funny that that kind of happened in the comic, G1 comic, and then kind of in the Headmasters. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of repeating there. Uh, let's be real. No one liked Rodimus and Galvatron. I did. I think I mean, the, the, I'm, the I'm, I'm, I'm okay there. with like See, the way I am is like, I love Prime and Megatron and I love them so much and I'm satisfied. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't like Rodimus and Galvatron as much, but that doesn't mean I hate them. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. But sorry, yeah. I'll cut you off. No, no, it's all good. Um, so Rodimus, I think whenever he learned a lesson um, and, and had some growth, it almost felt like it was a reset in the next episode. Like none of that growth yeah. seemed to translate <laughs> over. That's it's true. Like, okay. Today I've learned something. Tomorrow I'll forget it. Uh, and, and <laughs> That's that why when Sean funny. told me about like a Galvatron's improved psyche, I was like, can't be because the, nothing carries over. Nothing ever carries over for one episode. But that's true. But Rodimus, like he'd have these maturing <laughs> lessons and then yeah. I hate the man of the leadership. But <laughs> dude, you had a bad week. And I, I never understood why he would revert back to Hot Rod when he lost the Matrix. Like it's not yeah. it's not something that automatically transforms you into something else, right? Uh, Ultra Magnus yeah. held it and did nothing for him. I've always, um, always wondered that too. Why is he the only one that gets uh, like a power up? That that's a whole live stream discussion on its own. Yeah. Why does the <laughs> Matrix? True, true. I don't Why want to take us on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> did it I always just though? assumed it was because it, it the Matrix is somewhat sentient and intelligent and understands it needs to be protected. So if it's in the wrong, I mean, there's a whole discussion of, well, he was the chosen one. What do you mean wrong? But if he was in, if the matrix fell into the hands of a protector that wasn't up to the task, then the matrix just went. Now you are. Did, didn't it, right. um, didn't it transform Optimus as well? Nah, no. I'm sure right. in some comic maybe, but in the cartoon, he never changed when he lost it. Clear, um, clearly the matrix didn't want to be in a hot rod. <laughs> it, gives him, it gives him more strength i think and, and then there's like mysticism experience. mysticism too mm -hmm. like if you if you take into account that it's the spirit of primus and all that then there's you just can't explain that like it's not technical it's just it's a mystic mm -hmm. godlike thing like why did it transform him because god i mean because primus uh, wanted to is the answer and yeah, sure. how, how are you going to quantify what a god does you know, the transformer God looked at Prime and went, "You're good. You don't you don't need any help." And looked at Hot Rod and went, "You're young. You're inexperienced." Not only thing to think about is not only did it give Hot Rod a bigger, more powerful body, it aged him. Like mm. in the blink of an eye, he's aged. What in Transformers years, probably a million years. He's calm. Yeah. He's uh, intelligent, wise. He's not impulsive anymore. At least in the movie, the show. Yeah, right. You His know, face didn't... looks more mature. He has more lines. Exactly. So it aged him too. It didn't just make him stronger. It made him wiser. And it's the wisdom of billions of years, right? So that's yeah. that's how we could pull that off. 
Maybe it um, should have went into Grimlock. Right, Gavin, yeah, you were going to say that. <laughs> uh, as a 10 year old kid, would you accept a new stepdad in the house? <laughs> Rodimus was the stepdad no one wanted. Um, <laughs> Did you like the Netflix series take on Megatron and Galvatron relationship through time? And I didn't catch that one. So did any of you guys, can you comment on that? Didn't see it. No. Hmm. David, thank you for joining us. And for, thanks for the super chats. Appreciate that. Uh, real Aaron Collins Optimus was actually rebuilt from Orion Pax by Alpha Trion. Trion rebuilt his girlfriend. That's right. So the body that Alpha Trion rebuilt was already Super size. It wasn't the Matrix that took Orion and beefed him up. That was Alpha mm. Trion going, I'm going to put the Matrix in this guy. Maybe Alpha Trion, it's fun to discuss this stuff, didn't know that happens. Maybe that's never happened. Mm. Hot Rod might have been the first time that ever happened. I don't know. Like, Well, there's that whole prophecy that they have with the Matrix. How, you know, mm -hmm. they, they, someone will light their darkest hour. Um, so maybe, maybe it was always meant to be hot rod maybe it was always meant to be that he does expand into a, a greater more powerful robot uh but maybe that prophecy didn't mean always hold the matrix and always be the leader maybe it meant for this moment you are yeah. going to be the hero that we need after that you're free to do what you like you know pass, yeah. pass on the leadership if you don't want to be a part of it hey hans look who's in the hans. chat here <laughs> Good to see you again, Hans. Gentle humans, good to see you. I liked Rodimus. I do wish he and Optimus had more time to be mentor and student. Hans, if you want to join us, let me know. I can shoot you the link. But I totally understand. We already had a nice long chat today, so uh, that might uh, be enough time away from the family. Um, the Matrix. Do you guys think it had ever been opened before that point when Hot Rod opened it? Because Hot Rod opens it. That's mm. another thing to take into account. He doesn't just pop it in like Magnus or Prime. He mm. opened it. So yeah. like he's opening it when he's growing. It's not just holding yeah. it because he holds it earlier in the movie. It doesn't do anything. He's opening it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that might also, I mean, if Fortress Maximus had picked it up <laughs> <laughs> and in that moment was in the right place yeah. at the right time and opened it, who knows? Like, dude, 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 oh, oh, we're going to put this guy. <laughs> so is opening with, it. Uh, with Unicron. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe that's opening it. it. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's yeah, the maybe. reason why he transforms because he actually opens it and nobody's opened it in like millennia. Well, I mean, ever. Ultra Magnus tried. Hmm. No, that's he right. But that wasn't the moment the that he needed. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't the moment right. that he needed. He was being attacked by the Decepticons on, was, the, on the junk planet, right? He's like, come on, open up. It was Even only Magnus in the darkest hour, not everyone else. Right. <laughs> Just his. <laughs> the Prime like, no, isn't in their darkest hour either. So he didn't have <laughs> he didn't have that ability to grab the Matrix and do anything with it during the Battle of the Autobot City. That's a very um, that's a very personal war. It's a very personal attack. Whereas Unicron is someone that is uh, an, an an entity or a being that's coming along and destroying whole worlds and whole it's civilizations cool. and and. and that that is the bigger picture it's like well you know this isn't just for, to save us this is to save the universe yeah so, oh, so, yeah. so the yeah. matrix is a one shot yeah. right it's a one shot deal and it's got to mm. charge up for a while uh yeah, yeah that's it's, it was an interesting take when um they did the return of optimus prime when it was empty i remember yeah. as a kid or as a young young man a teen Optimus giving it to Hot Rod and Hot Rod going, it's empty. Yeah. <laughs> and Prime goes, it's up to all of us to fill yeah. it again. Like, wow. dude, like that's going to take forever. <laughs> is there like, yeah, exactly. Like you're, well, that means that somebody started with an empty one. Right. Yeah. And then yeah. over time, they that would have been an interesting mini series too. If Sumbo continued, if we're going to circle back around to Sumbo. Oh, that's yeah. a great yeah. idea. Let's go through the, the people that held the matrix through time. And do a mini yeah. series on that. If yeah, if the cool. toys, the toy lineup was not a factor, if Hasbro's checklist was not a factor, and they just told the Sunbow writers, do what you do best and come up with a good story, a good human or, or robot, mm -hmm. but story, fill the matrix. And it's just either hot rod or maybe in order, like, let's be realistic here. It is a little bit about selling toys. So 
it would have been 1988. I'm looking at the 88 shelf. He gives it to, um, I don't know, one of the pretenders or something. He gives it to, I don't know, whoever, Metal Hawk or, and he goes, your turn. And so he mm -hmm. realizes it's not just up to me. It's up to all, like Prime said, it's up to all of us to fill it again. So nice. <laughs> give it to good Lord, that episode. <laughs> me, Grimlock, looking for smarts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would have given him a lot more wisdom if had you given it to Grimlock. So you're not wrong, Gaz. It probably would have elevated him out right. of being he, me dumb Grimlock to... He and the King. rest of them attacked Unicron. <laughs> Just jumped on and started tearing him apart. Can you imagine oh, what he could do with the Matrix? Well, they stomped the butt. The you know, they went straight for the butt, guys. Come on. <laughs> they did damage. All right. Imagine I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> lag or sludge with the Matrix. Now your turn, sludge. <laughs> Me go fishing. <laughs> like, it wouldn't always have to be action, action versus Decepticons. It, it could be little human story. And I mean, I'm picturing something like that Th Thundercats reboot show. Remember mm. uh, if you've yeah. uh, seen the one where they're walking through the forest and uh, the little leaf guy lives his whole life within a few, like an hour yeah. or so, yeah. something yeah. like that, something like a, a human story. And you would think like, what could sludge possibly add to the matrix? But he comes out and it's like a, a story of life and death and, and life. And it's like, wow, you know, just pass it off to each guy and have those little individual human stories one at a time. Something totally different from the rest of the toy commercial show, but uh, just something a little more modern. I think a Netflix show, just guys yeah. carrying the Matrix around and having these little experiences, filling mm -hmm. the thing. Guys you'd never expect. Like I wish I could name some of these guys: Gunrunner, one of the Pretenders. <laughs> uh, yeah, Grimlock was a Pretender, so you could even say, "Yeah, Grimlock, go. You're you're on the shelves this year." Or jazz. Hey, man, we're going down to Detroit. You know, get some soul in the Matrix. Would have been a very interesting take on it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Hans will not be joining us this time. Thank you. But uh, hopefully next time. Have a great night, Hans. Great chatting with you earlier today, too. To, to take it in a different direction, what if Sumbo got, you know, got the rights to do them both again and decided, you know what, why don't we just do like a combined show? Glad you brought mm. that up. And they go to in and, and they use the Defiant to go to space, and the Defiant itself is a transformer. Oh, mm. man. And, and Cobra, <laughs> after the defeat at Cobra La, has retreated to a point where you know because they're being looked for at our at all points of the globe, are on the moon, in like a Decepticon city. What's his, what's his name? The large. They have one, right? The city. Trypticon. Trypticon. Yeah, Trypticon. Orpanoc, and he's based dude. on that. Yeah. And 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 then now you have combined <laughs> the universes. Gaz is cooking. <laughs> hey, you're, you're crazy, Amanda. I, I was th wondering, like, how would you combine them? But again, the defiant is the key. Yeah. That's the key. That's that's mm -hmm. how you get to Cybertron. That's a, and there's atmosphere in Cybertron. They've already proven this. So you can have the Joe team running around on Cybertron, but that's how they get to and from and they got to go to Mars or whatever. That's that's how you get the Joes believably in the Transformers universe. Like, no, you don't have to send Omega. He falls apart half the time anyway. We've got the Defiant. Or, or even Cybertron yeah. could be orbiting like Jupiter hmm. and Autobots are secretly on Earth. And, you know, when they when the Joes take it out into space, maybe a shuttle missing. So shuttle went missing or something like some deep exploration in the solar system and the joes went out to investigate what happened to this shuttle and they discover mm -hmm. cybertron and then that just kicks it all off but are you jumping to the year 2005 or six or depending on are we are we time jumping because transformers uh, are already there. no so, i'm dude, saying like it's 1980 Fairborn, it's like connective issue. right i forgot yeah season three uh, jumped ahead in like 20 years no i'm sticking like in 1988 89 right around there because then if you introduce Flint's daughter as a child, right? Marissa. So that so then you've got because she's she shows up, you know, quite a bit in the in the Transformers. Um yeah, then could that, that could be the that could be the link. Yeah, and then you'll have like the eighty eight wave or eighty nine wave of Joe's and you can just they don't have to be like, oh, it's the eighty eight wave. It could be like a future wave. Those characters could be older or you know, 
the the characters we all below loved in the Sumble series are now older, and these are the new guys. Yeah, these are the new. But yeah, Repeater, like, Repeater's the new guy. That's yeah, leaning, yeah, that's leaning heavily into his alien tech. <laughs> yeah, Spearhead and Max. Like, there's there's no reason those guys can't be future guys. Lightfoot and Shockwave and all yeah. those guys they can be futuristic. Uh, Swindle says it would have been cool when the Matrix was opened. It would have allowed Cybertron to transform and fight Unicron. Cool. At the end, Flint Dilly wanted Cybertron to transform in his original script. That goes with um, the Marvel comic a little bit that the Matrix is connected to Cybertron. It's the soul of Primus. So yeah, that 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 makes sense. And it always felt when I when I watched that movie as a kid. Okay, you got this big planet transforming Unicron. What about Cybertron? Like, you got robots fighting robots. Would you have a robot planet fighting a robot planet? And it never happened. It was like, you kind of left us hanging here. Like, doesn't Cybertron transform? Right. And they never got around to it until the toy. And then I guess some of the more modern animated <clears throat> shows have had Cybertron transform. I'm just going to say if Cybertron, Cybertron transforms, what happens to all the Autobots that are on Cybertron? MDF because it didn't turn out well for the city that was inside of SDF one. SDF one, that's what always meant. screwed everything up inside. Exactly what would happen. Total <laughs> chaos. It's a it's like a once in every five years type of thing. It's not a Fortress Maximus weekly transformation, uh, or even Metroplex. It, it would be total chaos, and it would be mm -hmm. a long, elongated sequence of like run, bolt it down, <laughs> magnetic feet on. Like it would. Lots of shots inside, and the whole planet just going crazy, and and then like the hero shot where Primus would be in robot form, and you know he'd look all amazing, and then you'd see shots of people floating in space. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it comes at a high price to do that. It's a, it's like a last line of defense, just like SDF. Or, or because they're transformers. I mean, what if they just transform into some sort of thing to aid Cybertron? In their battle, like he, they add their power to him, so he can be power him. master. Our, yeah. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> cool idea. Head all of the gimmicks: power master, headmaster, target master. That's really getting into the toy sale gimmick type of thing. Uh, don't forget, Grimlock did in fact create the Technobots. He did that when he was smart. I think if they made Unicron the original planet that the Transformers came from, and now he's, he's out there coming to collect back those things that were originally a part of him. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so Marissa Fairborn is the daughter. Nothing was ever officially said. <clears throat> I, I kind of get the feeling they weren't allowed to officially say that. There was this weird separation in the old days between those cartoons, Transformers and G.I. Joe. Um, when Cobra Commander appears on Transformers, they never call him that. They mm. just call him the Snake, Old Snake. Well, it's him. It's but clearly it's, him, right? it's Chris Lada. It's him. It's the voice. It's even the faceplate. But I always thought like there's something going on here that they are not allowed to call him Cobra Commander, and have him with the Cobra symbol on a Transformer show. And then with Marissa Fairborn, um, there's an episode where she meets her father. And it's Flint, but he's never called Flint. And it's mm -hmm. played by the guy who played Flint in the G.I. Joe cartoon. Yeah. But he's never called Flint. And then it, it turns out to be, I think that was like a hologram or something anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but again, nothing officially said. So that's what I love about the Sunbow stuff. Like the little Easter eggs and the little read between the lines. We're not going to sp spoon feed you everything yeah. that, that you... you you know, we're just so enjoyable to connect the dots. They let you connect the dots sometimes instead of just put it all out there and leave nothing to the imagination. Yeah. Well, in the in the Sumbo in the Sumbo Joe universe, they do have the technology to jump dimensions, right? Because they had done that. I mean, what was it? Um, what's the name of that um, one where they go to the alternate universe? What's that one called? Was that the inverted um, universe? War, yeah, war the, with worlds without end. Yeah, that one there. You know, they open they opened that up. So why why couldn't they open up a mm. portal to the Transformers world, Transformers Earth, and Spike and his dad come shooting through with Bumblebee? Well, the Golden Fleece had time travel, so you know, there's exactly. also that. Right, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We could have had the Sarge and uh, Cliff Jumper fighting 
<laughs> fighting at the Battle of Thermopylae. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, Leonidas, you and your 300 can go home. <laughs> you know Cliff Jumper, you could go home too. Cliff Jumper would be like, no way, let me at him. <laughs> and, uh, they could bring back the MacGuffin device. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hans has a great idea here. Here's your crossover. Headmasters and power masters as yep. Joes. G.I. Joe's controlling. And they're kind of doing that now, finally, with the G.I. Joe Transformer crossover. They're just Joe O-ring figures that sit in the vehicles. But that's a, that's a cool idea. Instead of just some... Yeah. And, you know, that always bugged me about the Headmasters and Power Masters. Who are these guys? Who is Gort? Who mm -hmm. is... I mean, we knew Spike, but that's the only one. Like, who's Arcana? These new... Yeah. Dudes. If they had been characters that we already knew, like, how awesome would it have been if... Um, Chrome Dome came with clutch. Yeah, How mind yeah, yeah, yeah. blowing would that have been as a kid? Like, what clutch? Yeah, what, how, why? Hardhead comes with Steeler. Like, but, how awesome would that be? I'm sold. Uh, Gold Bug implies there was a huge battle after they got Prime back, which left the Decepticons spread all over the galaxy. That storyline could have been the second movie itself. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Flint's real name is Dashiel Fairborn. <laughs> Man, they don't come up with names like that anymore. Dashiel Fairborn. I remember as a kid going through the, those big phone books we used to have and coming up with file file names for some new characters. And that's just how you do it. Like just flip. Yeah, and, yeah that's a that's an interesting name and flip, and that's an inter interesting last name. Uh, the combiners merged with Metroplex. Yeah, they did. Snake did. That's right. He tried to shout out Cobra and Choke. That's another, like, yeah. why? Why are they hiding something? Or were they skirting mm. some rights issues? <clears throat> so Buzz has talked. Um, and I'm, I'm doing another commentary with Buzz soon on a Inhumanoids episode. And the episode nice. we're doing is the uh, Teenager Zombie one. Because that one in particular, Buzz said, like, the voice actor said to him, are you serious? They're going to let us say this stuff. That that was where the reins were just off. It's like, look, the line is tanking. No one cares. Do what you want. No one cares anymore. Was it Inhumans that Inhumanoids that had the G.I. Joe connection as well? Or was that the cops? It was cops, right? Cops it was a had son. Beachhead's. Yeah. yeah. Beachhead's like grandson, right? Sneeding. I can never remember if it was son or grandson because cops is in the future, but I can't remember how far. So it's either son or grandson, depending on how the timelines. Well, it's um, Beachhead that's the second, and uh, uh, the the cops character is the third in their name. I don't remember Beachhead having like a Wayne Sneeden Jr. I'm looking it up right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, but if it's not the major. There's, there's your breakup. Uh, I think, Gaz, um, to, to your point, Gaz, I think that the perfect the perfect timeline, this Transformers G.I. Joe crossover, is between where the uh, Transformers series ended before the movie. Because you've got all of that time until you get to 2005 to be able yeah. to use all these Joe characters and integrate the Transformers into it. And then... Um, uh, then they go off and, and do their own thing by 2005. You've got a lot of years in there that you can add classic Transformer characters to different Earth modes. So you could have Bumblebee yeah. as an Ore Striker. Uh, you know, I, and I saw some people say, well, he's not, the Ore Striker's not yellow. It should be someone else that's green. It's like, well, they're robots in disguise. They don't have to be any color. They can be whatever color they like. Yeah. <laughs> I got to ask you this, Hazel. Well, well, I got you on here. Uh, have they announced the uh, Triple T? Transformers crossover yet? Officially, no, not officially. Who do you? What transformer do you want to see transform into the, to the Triple T? Well, the rumor is that it's Cup, um, uh, and I think it's all but confirmed that it is Cup and Sarge, right? No, not bad. Um, it's a Triple T. That's not a bad. That's not a bad choice. But I think um, I think Ironhide would have been a pretty logical choice to to go up with the Sarge. Um, Gaz would have loved it to be Grimlock, I'm sure. Braun. Braun. No, you'd have, yeah, have to be a T Rex, yeah. though. <laughs> I just, I look at the colors. Like, I, I kind of want the colors to match up more than anything. So, yeah, but I, there's just no white tank like Autobot that, that matches that Serge's personality. 
like not searchlight like no that doesn't work yeah. i don't know so yeah cup well, that's actually, why i think that when the when the when the ore striker transforms into bumblebee you get that yellow on the robot portion but the rest of it doesn't really uh have to look yellow right so yeah. if we're looking at the, the tea it is more of a gray white off white color uh but you know that could be that could be anyone um it could be ultra magnus it could be optimus prime um i think it'd be a, a you know a bit of a skyfire you know, it could be skyfire <laughs> sky but i think um they call cup sergeant cup these days right so i think that's probably why they put them Sur together mm. sergeant cup sergeant slaughter yeah um mm. <laughs> Quick switch being six shot, six shots, son. Um, yeah, Spike's son Daniel did become a headmaster paired with RC, RC in uh, Rebirth and T. Hello there. It says, When my nephew first watched Only Human, he had no idea about G.I. Joe, so assumed Cobra Commander was actually Starscream in human form. <laughs> interesting, which would have been really interesting. Well, yeah, I mean, I like mean for, for the Triple T, you could also could have went with Jazz because he was like yeah. a. Like the sergeant, right? He was like the second in command, or like third in command. That's right. Of uh, of the Transformers, right? Yeah, he was. I mean, he's that cool, that cool Porsche. But I guess he could be a triple T. I just, I think Hound, because Hound, like Hound, wasn't a tank, but he was an ar army jeep. So yeah. you know, yeah. Triple T. Well, Hound's my favorite Transformers. I would have loved a mashup with Hound and Sarge mm -hmm. together. But I'm glad that they're not doing the Star Wars thing where they just made the Millennium Falcon turn into a robot Chewbacca and Han Solo. You know, <laughs> that, that's a little bit too much for me. Crash there. Hey, Crash. Hey, Crash. Why wasn't it Beachcomber? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's too, good he's like mellow, <clears throat> too mellow to be like a military vehicle, isn't he? That's yeah. true. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just thinking, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think positive, like positive, like, what mellow Joe are you going to pair Beachcomber up with? Oh, Footloose. Footloose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. You see, man, you want to go get some tacos? Wow. Hey, man, the waves are good. Let's go get those. Yeah. <laughs> Cobra attack. Cobra attack. Bummer, dude. We're crazy. <laughs> Better call Warpath and uh, Steeler. <laughs> Warpath. I think Warpath that would be a great be mauler right with, with iron, with uh, heavy metal. Oh, that's an awesome yeah. idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, getting back to G.I. Joe, uh, what Sunbow would have done with it. Um, what else? Any other ideas? Well, I mean, they they touch. I think it's really good with Operation Dragonfire where they, they put sort of like a pin in the Himalayas stuff. Right, it starts off in the Himalayas. There, uh, they don't really talk about what's happening with uh, Cobra La or anything, but they do uh, bring Cobra Commander back to the forefront. So, if you're if you're dying for Cobra Commander to come back, then I think that's probably what they could have done. Um, but he sort of had his redemption moment. So, um, you know, but I, I guess it's that whole you know the enemy of my enemy is my friend situation. But I like that redemption thing where it was like, you know, the, and the bond that he had with, with Roadblock where um, uh, I, think they could, I think they could have just put a pin on Cobra Commander as well. But I do think bringing in Overlord would have been a great uh, new bad guy, right? So, so Cobra is a little bit disheveled right now. Um, Overlord comes along with the help of the twins and, and starts to rebuild Cobra into a more threatening and um and and not just terrorists right but you know global uh uh takeovers business side of stuff too internet providers yeah yeah, yeah, that yeah. Stuff. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and you got to throw destro's iron grenadiers in there too make I it was, a three-way oh, fight man. i was yeah, i was gonna say that i was gonna say like overlord would push cobra commander out because he obviously you take over with the twins and then destro not liking that never really liked the twins right so he would go off on his own create his iron grenadiers and find cobra commander right bring him back and then they would you know maybe lay low kind of like in the shadows as gi joe's fighting this new version of cobra it's a cool idea of cobra commander even when he's down and out he's always like the biggest threat like just yeah, yeah. he he is like that bad penny that just keeps turning up you cannot get rid of him and when you think oh it's over he's been 
he's being phased out. He's in his jobber phase now for, for, for wrestling fans. And he just always comes back up on top. C- kind of like kind of like how he is in Resolute. Yo, Joe's. Right? Phil? Hey, Phil. Kind of like, kind of like he's in Resolute, right? That kind of Cobra Commander with Destro where he's I'm like, I'm not, I'm not being the – Yeah, exactly. I'm done playing the clown. Right. Yeah. Well, hmm. because Cobra Lara isn't hanging over him now either, right? Because yeah. that was hmm. – he probably had that in the back of his mind. He's like, I've got to – maybe, what if? And hear me out here. What if he was purposely being ignorant and a little bit uh, of, a, of a slapstick character because he didn't want Cobra La to take over, right? But now that those reins are off, now he's the real Cobra commander and, you know, he's more menacing. He's got a plan uh, and, he's, and he's, he's not playing with kid gloves anymore. Or he's had, or maybe he's he's had, around a hero. He's had Destro building the Iron Grenadiers the whole time. Mm. Double cross. Right? Mm. Yeah, because he wants to get away from Cobra La Cobra. This is starting to sound like Cobra Kai with all the <laughs> <laughs> double and triple crosses. Yeah, who's Terry, yeah. who's, well, here, who's Terry here. Silver here? Cobra Commander or, or Crease? <laughs> here's the question. If they were if they were gonna do this sec in another season after the movie, and they knew they were gonna do it after the movie, right? Does Duke stay dead in the movie? Hmm. No, I think well, that, either way you go, Duke stays alive. I think yeah. that that was that was pushing it a little too far, and uh, yeah, they they realized like, yeah, we can kill a robot because you can bring him back. That was Buzz's whole point of saying we need to kill Duke off because you don't bring dead humans back. Although right. Marvel Comics, right? Come on, right? <laughs> There's always a way to, especially in a property that's. You know, had sci-fi stories. There's always a way. Even even the um, alternate dimension um, episode bring Duke out of that universe. Yeah, that's different, what I'm saying. Different Duke, but still Duke. But yeah. I think Duke stays alive because that's that's the face of of the brand. Or yeah, or you, you leave it where you think he's dead, and then as, as a series starts, you find out he's not dead. Does, that that's he's... another thing. The search for Duke. Yeah, that'd be cool. <clears throat> That'd be a good character piece for Duke, actually, is if when he comes out of his coma, he's not, you know, he's not able to walk. You know, he's got to go and, and maybe he's Robo Joe. I don't know, but, um, <laughs> he's, you know, but he's maybe build some character there where he's got to maybe start leading from the sidelines now, and he's got a little bit of resentment um, mm-hmm. that he can't be in, in the battle anymore. Uh, kind of like Hawk stuck in a wheelchair, maybe. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting way to go. Uh, Asking, T's asking if there were no Sunbow episodes after the G.I. Joe movie. That was it. That was the swan song. That was the end, unfortunately. And uh, didn't they kill off both Bazooka and Major Blood in Resolute? They did. And talking of Resolute, I think that's where Sunbow would have went. Like that, more than anything, really, Resolute feels like Sunbow more than a lot of modern rebirths, reboots of G.I. Joe. Sunbow to an extreme... (laughs) Totally. Uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> not to be confused with GI Joe Extreme, which is not at all extreme. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. <laughs> so maybe the tone of the show would would change as the the audience gets a little bit older. Um, things get a little bit darker, higher stakes. Yeah. I'm thinking of that time. That time in uh would be like the late 80s going into the 90s it was kind of like darkish you had the x-men show up and it was kind of the dark kind of a, a series and there was other other shows that were kind of like that so yeah i would think gi joe would take a turn to that that little dark more more of an older kid like teenage feel to try to keep those viewers watching and in 87 88 that wouldn't have been such a stretch considering in humanoids mm-hmm and what they had done in the Transformers movie, you know, so it wouldn't have been all that um, surprising. Farming little people. Hello there. Good to see you. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. Um, Cobra Commander makes his own Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I, that would have been an interesting scene. Cobra Commander and Galvatron or Cobra Commander and Megatron. Them trying to uh, coexist. Oh, here we go. Battle Force 2000 in the mm-hmm. year 2000 for a five-part story. 
with dual timelines yep. or time travel. That so something. how do you guys feel about Battle Force 2000, first of all? I'm okay with them. I think that I like some them. of the figures are pretty well sculpted. I I, I know that the uh, the actual machines and vehicles and stuff were supposed to connect a lot better than they actually did, yeah. but I like the idea of uh, the modular uh, mm -hmm. base to separate into, into different things too. I think for what it was, it's, it's actually pretty good. Seems like yeah. a lot of Joe fans have come around and said, I, I don't hate it as much as I used to because like it, the eighties Joe's are so finite. That's like, mm. you know, there's still eighties or nineties. Oh, anyone as a kid that didn't like battle force 2000. It just, it seems like it's all later stuff. Like when we've grown up and we think we're more mature now, it's like, Oh, I didn't really like battle yeah. force 2000. I'm too I, cool. I, I, I like the, the snow tank. The, the avalanche. Um, yeah, yeah it, that's a good one. It, it, it had the skis on it, and then it would open up and it had like this little six wheeler, eight wheeler vehicle that came out, and I thought that was really cool. Yeah. So I think that's again not as Joe as a lot of Joe stuff, but <clears throat> that's your your segue, your connection point portal into Transformers crossover. It, mm. it seems like Battle Force Two Thousand belongs in the Transformers world a lot more than. Lieutenant Falcon and Tunnel Rat and you know Footloose. the fridge belonging in a Transformer <laughs> story Footloose. <Yeah>. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be still pretty cool. Here's an and interesting then you, idea. And then you can make those vehicles that Transformers as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're seeing X Men ninety seven, which um from what I've seen, they got it. <laughs> like it's it's the old X Men show, but where I would have loved to have seen it go. You know, we, we got Masters of the Universe Revelation, Revelations, whatever it's called. And we were told it's going to continue your beloved filmation show. And it didn't really. Did <laughs> and then uh, the new one, I've watched a few of the new one and, and I like them. But um, kind of the first season kind of felt like a little bit of a bait and switch. But with this X-Men show, just feeling, yes, this is the old show, but a little more grown up. Um, this is a possibility bringing these shows back that we've been talking about all night long um gi joe and transformers transformers 88 um bring them on netflix or whoever paramount plus whatever company. i mean we've we've had had so you Sorry. know the comic that was in the animated universe was that a good seller maybe that's a good segue into making it into a cartoon that the one that had the giant bat i think so i didn't i didn't i didn't buy it but I've I've seen I've seen some of the covers to it, and it looks just like Sambo animation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think that if, if they were to, I mean, with Transformers, they've had more success with animation and shows than even movies than GI Joe's had. So, like, the spotlight would be on bringing GI Joe back as a successful show or movie franchise, right? And I would think that a mm -hmm. a TV show or a show on Netflix or Amazon, whoever wants to do it, would be better. But if they were to do it because there's so many characters. I mean, you want to center around one character, but you also want to do like, it's like, they are, I find they don't really do as much in TV shows because they just get to the point now, I wouldn't call them TV show series, that they get right to the point. There's no like arcs or anymore, right? It's Build. just straight to the point. Tell the tell your six point, six point story. Yeah. And like like the X-Files where you had, you know, that that alien mystery that Fox is always trying to figure out. But in between, you had all these small little episodes. And I figured this, I, if, if they were going to do it, if I was going to do one, I would do G.I. Joe show where I'd have like a massive story arc and I'd have like certain characters centered around that. But then in the middle, like four or five shows in between the story arc, I would do like individual shows about like certain characters. Yeah, and, I, cool. and it doesn't, it doesn't Special matter. Missions. It could yeah. be back. It could be back in the 80s. It could be present time and you can make a fictional, you know, where all these characters can be possible in today's in today's world and just do it that way and do it like come up with a 24 episode series and i think i think that would a lot of people would dig that i i think i would like to think right yeah i agree yeah i like it there's uh there's a correction here i made a mistake dominator mm -hmm. avalanche was the driver so yeah that the battle force 2000 right. snow tank <clears throat> was the dominator Avalanche right. was the driver. Avalanche was also the name of another tank, an awesome snow tank. Yeah. Um, that you have a great video about 
<laughs> that one was so fun, man. Out in the middle of nowhere. That yeah, was amazing. Was Could that have was Avalanche great. driving the Avalanche. That's no, true. There you go. That's cool. meta. <laughs> that's a that's a meta comic right there. I am Avalanche, and yet I'm in Avalanche. Uh, Buzz should pitch it. I, I'm I'm just a fan. I'm not an insider. I have no power whatsoever. But I'm willing to bet that they don't give a crap what Buzz thinks, or Larry <laughs> thinks, or yeah. Flint Billy thinks, or any of the people who made this stuff special. I don't think they so care what they th they think anymore. Somebody in the comments brought up the uh, the new um, Skybound comics, particularly Cobra Commander and Duke. Is there any any of you guys reading those? I don't know. I haven't yet. I haven't. I've been reading them, and they're pretty good. They're pretty good. And there's a scene with Cobra Commander and Megatron together in the Cobra Commander show. Ooh. Uh, well, not show. Uh, and, comic. And and there was in the Marvel too, like when they brought Megatron back, the G2 tank, there was some interaction between Cobra Commander and Megatron as well. Let, there, me just, but... let me throw this at you. It's Cobra Commander with the chained up Megatron in Cobra Law. Oh, man. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> throw in some Marvel characters too yeah. while you're at it. Spider Man <laughs> did cross over with the Transformers and uh, they were Sunbow, right? Marvel Sunbow? Yeah, something they did. Um, yeah, Spider Man and Friends, right? Was Sunbow, wasn't it? It was, I think. Yeah, I believe it was. And they were and the on X fire in the 80s. Yeah. And there was actually, <clears throat> uh, where's my uh, Major Durlin figure? A uh, little known fact there was one more Sunbow G.I. Joe thing after, after the movie. Oh, now what was it? It was, it wasn't Sergeant Savage, but it was something like that. Um, Sunbow Productions. It was it was a one off, I believe. Looking for it right yeah. now. I mean, I didn't uh, even GI Joe Marie. Extreme. That's what I was thinking. Uh, in 1995, GI Joe oh, Extreme. Yeah. You could that even incorporate had Lady J in it, right? Uh, I, I can't Sergeant remember Blake? most of it. I'm I'm thinking maybe Hawk was in it too, like a maybe a wheelchair bound hawk or an older hawk it's foggy it was a long time ago that i saw it, but it was such a, a an oddity that like what do you mean sunbow did another joe thing in 1995 like how how did i not know this existed and i expected mm -hmm. it to be this holy grail and it just ended up being a thing who was who was the main bad guy in that in, in extreme was it that iron claw dude it was yeah it was something like mm -hmm. that it wasn't cobra they yeah. It moved on. It, it it didn't wipe out the Sunbow GI Joe history. I think it references it, but it was basically starting from scratch. So, do we think that if they'd kept going, that they would have included the fridge in live action segments as well as? Uh, I okay. Yeah, I wish to. So, I, it's, I, I, man, I would think they would have. It would have been awesome yeah. to see Fridge and Sarge do live action segments, you know, like, oh, we're in trouble, Sarge. What's going to happen next? Tune in and find out in two minutes. <laughs> you know, like, that would have been I'm in. Awesome. I'm in. <laughs> Sarge has a snake attacking him, and the Fridge like eats it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> off. just pulls the bones out. Yeah. <laughs> and Sarge eats the bones up. Ah, <laughs> that would have been amazing, man. Sarge doing segments with the fridge. <laughs> drop and give me 20. No, you drop and give me 20 because they're both <laughs> right. Would he have gotten his own would he have gotten his own um sub team as well? The fridge? Yeah. Man, the bears. How awesome yeah. would the fridges yeah, and yeah. bears be? The fridge <laughs> and his bears. That'd be that would be cool. Joe Bears. I, I don't know what the rights are like. If the Chicago Bears would be like, nah, you can't do that. We're the bears. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of like sub team for the fridge would be amazing. Just football it right up. Give them like a, a football field tank playset. So instead of the general, it's like it's a football field that all opens up. <laughs> Uh, Captain Gridiron. Gridiron. Yeah, <laughs> it kind of makes me wonder with gridiron like was that supposed to be somehow connected to the fridge and things just didn't pan out well they also the had that was it on that armored too, vehicle right? as well 
What's that, guys? I was going to say they have that armored vehicle that kind of looks like a football helmet. That's the bunker? Yeah, the yeah. battle bunker? Yeah, the yeah. battle bunker, right? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's what like would have happened with G.I. Joe. It would have turned into a football show. We've decided instead of battling yeah. all over the planet, we're going to play Cobra at football. It'll be yeah. like the second season of Mask, where it just goes right off the rails. <laughs> now, the racing season? Yeah. Were they going to race in, Venom for world domination? They, they could have. They could have brought in um, Michael Jordan and uh, Gretzky as well. Instead oh, of doing yeah. their superhero show, it could have been all in GI Joe. Bring in Paul Molitor, one of my. They drag in that players. poor football coach from that Transformers episode where, uh, like Blitzwing, the triple takeover. <laughs> he forces that guy to like be his general or whatever. Oh, that'd be awesome! It's like no, not again. <laughs> <laughs> uh take destro's dominator and make it a new decepticon triple changer uh now wouldn't that be a good idea secret wars 2 had transformers tie in comic really yeah, transformers really. was in that hmm. okay yeah. why not i would go back to the Maybe. 80s too many attempts to modernize joe in the media already uh, the thing i like about x-men 97 is they're going back like to to 97 mm -hmm. so it's a bit of a retro piece where it's before cell phones, it's before, you know, widespread internet. And yeah. that's what really excites me about this topic here. Where would they have gone? Cause we're locked into 87, 88, like in that time period. And in Buzz's story, the most dangerous man in the world, it's, um, you know, it's, he, he said it was a modern tale. But the way I read it was like, there's no reason this can't be 87 or 88, you know, like they um, or, or maybe it was the other way around, because I think it might have been the other way around, actually, because I mentioned to him like the texting kind of threw me off like guys texting and, and Buzz was like, but they had that technology in the 80s. They're basically bond agents like they, they already had mm -hmm. the tech we have 30, 40 years later. So, yeah, even Buzz's story, um, now that I rem uh, remember correctly, is set in that time period, which. I like shows and movies that don't have the luxury of, oh no, the bomb's going to go off. Hey, disable the bomb. Okay, it's disabled. Yeah. Oh, that, was a, Roll that, credits. Was that was a close one. <laughs> like, oh, I miss the days of like pedal to the metal and race and the bomb's mm -hmm. going and the, the watch, you know, like race yeah. the watch. Is it the blue wire or the red wire? Yeah. <laughs> But oh, wait, say again, I'll text you. Okay, he sent me a, a schematic. Okay, uh, there we go. Whew. Close one. Well, I mean, I mean, you could, you could, I mean, we brought up Marvel and X Men. You could, you could put G.I. Joe into the Marvel cinematic universe without even any explanation. I mean, you just basically yeah. dismantled Shield. So the U.S. Yeah. government's going to look for something to replace that. Why not mm -hmm. G.I. Joe? already existing in the universe i think G. 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 Already existing is the perfect idea we don't have to always have an origin of something gi joe you. already yeah. existed in the cartoon we didn't see the formation of gi joe it was already there uh i like that in uh i don't i don't have an issue with rise of cobra necessarily but i did like that they were recruiting people to an already established team um and so they can just literally do like as i saying just have it already be a thing don't overcomplicate it. Right. You know, it is refreshing to not have to sit through an origin story every single time. And just yeah. flashbacks. Yeah. Flashbacks yeah. work. They're good enough. <clears throat> so like, here's a five-minute flashback of how Hawk assembled the team. Yeah. Instead of, you know, here, here we go again. The fourth retelling of how this all came to be. I mean, uh, the, the first Joe movie, and this obviously not too popular, but... Hawk just explaining to Duke in um, uh, what was his name? Ripcord. Ripcord, Ripcord yeah, Ripcord. What GI Joe was mm. is all you need. It's all you really need. And I mean, obviously, they're new to the team, so you give them a little montage of them joining, like training to become like full fledged members. But that's all you really need. And then just get on with the story. And you Hawk, don't need to. And Hawk showing up and them going, General Abernathy exactly let's do that like let's just have a guy have a legend behind him already without being mm -hmm. told why he's this big deal this legend and and quaid owns that scene like for all the issues that movie has i loved quaid as hawk i think he just was 
perfect as general hall i'm clayton yeah. abernathy like yes you are that's one thing they got right uh what if we merge the universes of marvel us uk sunbow and takara g1 on a crisis on infinite cybertron story yeah. i have no idea what he just said <laughs> i don't know what any of that means but uh yeah let's do it <laughs> so there's a different continuity to the uk Transformers and the U.S. comics, right. uh, Transformers, and merge those together as as uh, Infinite Crisis, which is when in DC wow. they had all the different multi universes come together and just uh, smash down into one big universe. I think that would be pretty cool. G G One U.S. Marvel did that with Transformers, though, when Simon Furman went from UK to mm -hmm. writing U.S. when Bob left, Bob Budiansky left, so he basically took his own continuity and went okay so everything bob has done fits with mine Perfect. So, yeah so the, the whole unicron setup and primus and the matrix and creation matrix and all that that's it's retconning everything to fit mine so he he kind of did that like just immediately by taking over i mean you could do that with gi joe as well the action force he's in cobra yep. commanders a snake all of a sudden this this new baron iron blood guy shows up right with yeah. these red shadows oh. flying oh, around in a, in a skull. Back is mind blood, and that's the big that's reveal. What that's what I meant, yeah. Like, you all yeah. think he's gone, but he's actually, yeah. I was just ch chatting with Hans today, and he uh, brought up, like, why a skull for the, what, what's the red skull thing called? The Skeletron or something? Mm. Yeah, uh, the Skeletron. Robo skull. Skeletron. Robo yeah. Skull. That's it, yeah. So Hans goes, why a skull? And I, and I said, because the flying femur isn't as terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, good point. Quick to the femurs. <laughs> you, what is that? Humorous. <laughs> the humorous. <laughs> Deploy humorous <laughs> fighters. <laughs> I'm just, I was, I was thinking when I, when I, when I looked at that and everybody was talking about it. And I was looking at, and I was thinking to myself, would I have bought that? Would I have wanted that if I was a kid? And I'm like, yeah, kind of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of cool. Giant flying mm -hmm. red skull, yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> this I could have went without again demystifying the origin of Unicron in season three when a little space monkey created him. <laughs> like I, yeah. I go with the comic creation. I, I like the idea of Unicron and Primus being there at the dawn of time. We're at the dawn of time, you had God, and then the devil said, I'm going to make this. And God said, well, I'm going to make this to fight it. And it's like, that's, they were there at the dawn of time, and they've been that's fighting for eons and eons and eons. Sometimes you don't need an origin story. Yeah. You or, don't need a little of that. You don't, or you can do what Furman did in the comic and just like explain it in a, in a panel or yeah. two panels Man. like that. That's all there is to it. There's no four part miniseries on how this came to be. It's just literally you exist now. Fight, yeah. fight forever. I don't have to have everything explained. You know, I, I kind of like continuing the mystery, you know, just making up in your own mind. Exactly. Yeah. This would have been um, more along the lines of um, so the special missions comics. I'd love to see a Netflix. I've said this before, a, a Netflix series of adaptions of Larry Hama's special missions issues. Uh, a la Delta force. This team already exists already and a mission brings them to action. So just <clears throat> unconnected like the old cartoons sometimes and beachheads on a mission with a couple guys. And then airtight has a spill to investigate with, with barbecue and, and whatnot and just bang out a couple of, loner yeah that's like that footloose is lazy day <laughs> i mean there's so many people who'd love to see that you know like i'm burnt out man you haven't left the pit in two years what do you mean you're burnt out <laughs> yeah you know how many dishes i've washed man just <laughs> just footloose, footloose driving beachhead crazy for 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 half an hour or an hour that'd be hilarious yeah, are you guys aware of how yeah. strong footloose is <laughs> yeah, he catches Destro and yeah, this is, oh, yeah true. Uh, Mike and the uh, what's on Joe mind guys brought this to light if you watch that intro where Destro is being thrown out like footloose oh, that's right. catches him with no effort and flings him like hey. the power yeah. of footloose always the quiet ones <laughs> always the quiet ones yeah, yeah. Uh, I, thought it was sort of, I always thought it was weird that they teamed him and mm -hmm. him and Dusty up like two different 
It's a jungle guy mm-hmm. and a and a desert guy together. It's, it was kind of weird. Their yeah. specialties don't mesh at all, but the personalities go perfect because they're yeah. they're both laid back, but Footloose just kind of makes Dusty seem really <laughs> together and more like yep. goal driven. Yeah. Where he's like honestly one of the most laid back, easy going Joes there is. I'd yeah. love to sit down and have a you know ginger ale with dusty but you, yeah. you stick it with footloose and dusty's like oh my golly would you please get up <laughs> <laughs> but that tank episode the two of them in in the mall or against that super tank was just awesome man and you don't need yeah. a huge team fighting a huge team just yeah. them running through the desert like trying to get this mauler to do something is like oh it was one of the best joe episodes ever yeah <laughs> And uh, Han says, learning how Nick Fury lost his eye in Captain Marvel was not cool because it was a joke, right? It wasn't even serious. Got scratched out by a cat. General Hawk's history being mysterious is far superior. And I'm totally cool with Hawk just being brilliant. That's that's the big origin story. He's brilliant. Well, it doesn't need to be scandalous or difficult or tragic. He's just brilliant. <laughs> like, yeah. that's it. he's great. He's great at his job. He got promoted very quickly because he was brilliant. Uh, Joe's versus Red Shadows. Who's yeah, the interrogator cool. and what's his relationship to Cobra? Wasn't that the original name for Mindbender? Yeah, I believe they so. changed it. Yeah, so they they tweaked his uh, his story there somewhere along the way. Uh, picturing Warpath hiding out in the Joe Motor Pool when he first reaches Earth. <laughs> for Lucid <laughs> We the interrogator that. does get a, his own action figure, though. Like they, they end up repurposing that name, interrogator, and it's that it's that Cobra, it's that Cobra character with the black helmet. Yeah, mm. yeah. No. he's he's on my he's on my hiss over there, but yeah, he's a. Cool I can't remember. His, I can't remember his um, file card though, but I'm sure that there's something in there that makes him a little bit more mysterious. Uh, possibly, uh, yeah, not quite on the side of Cobra Commander. Was that a modern or a vintage figure? Is I'm sure it was a vintage one. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. He came with one of the battle copters, didn't he? Possibly. I think so. I just remember he had a, a oh, black yeah, helmet. Sim. Yeah. Uh, over on... Let's see. Share screen. Over on Yo hey. Joe. This dude right here. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that's oh, it. you got him there. Let's go Ooh. solo layout. The <laughs> interrogator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that helmet. It's kind of cool. So battle copter figure. Yeah. Is that what he's from? Interesting. Yeah. Could it could be it could be <clears throat> a Cobra Commander in disguise? I mean, he's got the blue Ooh, and red good. stripes down the side. Interesting. Fancy schmancy. Well, guys, to close out here, um, how would you finish it? If Sunbow was told you got one more crack at it, one more season, you better have, well, you don't have to, I guess, but if you want, you can have like a clear final episode in mind. Like Rebirth had the whole Cybertron's restored and peace throughout the galaxy. Uh, But uh, how do you think Sunbow would have said, this is how we are wrapping up, putting a bow on G.I. Joe and Transformers? Hmm. Well, I feel like Transform. I think G.I. Joe the movie was, whether you like the movie or not, <clears throat> concluded their story very well. Um, uh, Cobra, the organization, is, uh, if not non existent now, it's definitely on its last legs. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they've, they've found out that their world was populated by some other being before they even evolved into humans. So they've got to sort of deal with that, I guess, in the back of their mind. But um, it was a, a great celebration at the end of that movie where they're like, we've, we've saved the world. What's bigger than that? What's bigger than saving the, the population of the world from turning into mindless beasts? Anything after that is like, maybe the next season is like, we saved the world and nobody knows. Um, you know, where, you know, we, we don't know where we've come from. There was something else here. And maybe mix in a little bit of um, uh, the, the unsurety of, of what the world is now. You know what is GI Joe now after after Cobra? Interesting. And that's maybe yeah. 
what's Batman without the Joker? What's Prime without Megatron? What's Joe without Cobra? Wipe out yeah. Cobra, and now the Joes are just sitting there going, well, yeah. well. Maybe there are no G.I. Joes now. Maybe that they've been disbanded, and maybe uh, there's maybe just do one more miniseries, one more five-part miniseries, if you have to do anything, yeah. and just have them have the first have the first episode be that they're no longer employed or they've gone back to their own military factions and then something comes back and they've got to bring the band back together. They're recalled to action. Yeah, yeah. Think, kind of like Operation Recall. Kind of, I, think I, I think I would <laughs> I think I would end I think I would end a C series in a five parter, obviously, right? Like mm-hmm. like like Zazel, Zazel suggested. You do some crazy harebrained Cobra Commander scheme taking over the world and fails and i would just end it like that like cobra failed not the decimation of cobra completely just failed and joe's are just like yeah well, it's just another day another day Sitting in a mess i'll drink on a coffee put loose yeah. laying back with shipwreck the same bunk way, above. yeah, yeah. see so kind of like, you know you, you could cripple cobra but maybe yeah, leave it right. open the possibility that may, they may come back it may take them some yeah. time but there's always the possibility that there's more to come. Yeah, because as a kid, you're like, you're like, well, Cobra's not defeated. GI Joe's still there. You can still make up stories in your head. Yeah, I picture um, what we were saying before, like Cobra Commander being that bad penny, and they're crippled, and it's over, and we're in financial ruin, and the Crimson Twins are broke, and Destro is is broke, and they're just we're we're broke, and. What are we going to do now, Commander? Shut up! Something always comes up. And he scratches a lottery ticket. <laughs> seven, seven, seven. And then whatever he gets the number he needs, it's like, yeah. Like he, he legitimately, back. without cheating, wins the Powerball. <laughs> We're back in business. Like something. Doesn't that sound so sunbow? Like the guy wins the mega lottery. And he's like, get me yeah. tanks, Destro. Because <laughs> of a lottery. As they, as they try to sneak away in disguise as like the old lady and construction <laughs> yeah. worker. And, yeah. He shows up. He shows up to collect the check. And he's yeah. got like a wig on. Still had the helmet on. <laughs> Still with the check. ID. <laughs> All of his ID has the face plate on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, it's perfect. No, you're wearing a different color helmet in this one. <laughs> um, so either that or a uh, tip of the hat to Larry Hama's comic final issue. Just that final issue is perfection. Uh, Snake Eyes' letter. Um, Snake Eyes wasn't that big a character in the cartoon, so it wouldn't really have the same impact, maybe, but. I mean, Snake Eyes was a fair, favorite character of a lot of kids, so maybe it would too. Like having Snake Eyes write a letter in the final episode of GI Joe, or even having someone read it, you know, for him to somebody. Again, that's going maybe a little heavier and deeper. The horrors of war and the truth of war, and then Sunbow might want to might want to get into, but maybe they would because Buzz was brought in to bring a little more military realism, being you know a, a soldier having a military history so maybe he could have gone the same route uh, as larry did and just kind of make it a tip of the hat and a salute to all men and women who served and just kind of remember your roots and yeah it's fun it's it's what if soldiers were superheroes but the final note would be like thank you to all who serve uh just like larry hama's final issue was like hey this ain't all glory you know, we we make it all fun and stuff, but it ain't glory. It's hard. It comes at a high price. And uh, thank you to all who serve. That's one idea. Uh, and then as far as Transformers goes, the final sign off of Transformers. How, like, can you top re- Rebirth? <laughs> yeah, it's um, pretty fun, that, right? I mean, they've they've saved their own planet. Uh, it's a new golden age of Cybertron. Mm-hmm. Anything after that, they what's their purpose now? Because they're the Decepticons aren't even really a thing, right? No, things are gone. Sort of the back, cast off into deep space or something. Which I mean, they could come back. I guess at some point, they're not definitively defeated. But yeah. I guess the only way that this would work is if they did do a crossover, and it is 
the lost years between the end of Transformers, the season before the movie, and the spores going off into space, um, uh, maybe that has a- awakened something from space that's going to come down to Earth. And now the Autobots, uh, being that they're from another planet, they they need to help prepare the Joes for possibly a- an invasion. And what the GI Joes don't know is that up until this point, uh, that Earth has already been invaded by aliens, and they're already here. They're robots in disguise, mm. right? And now, and now they have to uh, join together for whatever force is coming. Turns out, it's Galactus. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> oh hell! <laughs> Who else would it be? Uh, Bob, how you doing? Good evening, gentlemen. We'll catch up on the replay. Arguably the greatest live stream of all time. You could argue that and uh, <laughs> tune back in here on this channel. Bob is going to be joining me on Wednesday for the Piper stream. It is Rowdy Roddy Ooh. Piper's birthday, and we are Ooh. going to be celebrating the hot rod on uh, Wednesday night. So check that out. That's uh, cool. This is a cool idea here from Todd. Bring back all the Transformers that died. That's <laughs> that's a little bit of a an improvement on rebirth because they restored Cybertron. Yeah. But what about all those guys who died so tragically in the movie? And so, mm-hmm. yeah, it's schmaltzy and there's something to be said for, you know, the deaths in the movie. Some of them were, were great deaths for them, but uh, yeah, having Braun and Wheeljack and Hey, we're back. Mm-hmm. Um, would have, yeah. um, would have been a kind of satisfying to see the, those guys brought just because they were killed so brutally. Like Ironhide just went yeah. out like a punk and, yeah, it would have been cool. Uh, T thinks the rebirth ending was perfect, even though I was distraught as a kid when it happened. Um, Pro- probably all the Autobot too, bodies right? sent into the oh, Dark Awakening. Yeah, the Pro Pro bit it in the in the movie, didn't he? Took it right, yeah. he died. Yeah, he he got killed by Scavenger, which was like bad on top of bad. Like of all the guys yeah. to kill him, Scavenger did it. Brutal. The way that. Prowl goes though is it's probably one of the most brutal deaths. He melts from the inside out, and and the the, the flames and the smoke spewing out of him. Uh, it's probably the most visceral, if not uh, violent death. Yeah, they watched. Um, what was the movie with the unicorn that drowned in the mud? Uh, um, never ended yeah. story. Well, he was wasn't it a le- unicorn. Was it, it was his horse? Was right? his horse? Was yeah. that never ending yeah. story or legend? Yeah. Legend yeah, had the unicorn. Uh, well, whatever it was, the Transformers writer saw that and went, "Hold, hold our beer." <laughs> <laughs> In the first two minutes, <laughs> like if I can just get a crossover that has Duke riding Grimlock into battle, I'm all for it. <laughs> Action Masters were mercifully very short thing in the Marvel comic. Um, less said about them the better <laughs> yeah i don't want to see action masters transformers that don't transform <laughs> so uh can we get a proper cobra commander oh he, he was mentioning um can we get chris lotta ai uh you know uh, christopher collins that was another name he went by ai voices uh, i don't know about them sometimes in some of the star wars shows they're doing now it's cool to hear a dh vader and mark hamill luke skywalker and all that um it would be cool, but at the same time, I I don't know. I, I really love it when a, a guy can do a bang on impression. So yeah. in X Men ninety seven, for the actors that have passed away and they've got different mm-hmm. actors doing an impression, like the I think the voice actor that played Cyclops passed away. So the mm-hmm. guy doing Cyclops is so perfect because he's not just getting the voice right, but he's getting the cadence, the the yeah. tempo the it feels like he's getting the words emphasize he's getting the soul basically is what i'm trying to say he's not just getting the voice he's getting the soul the heart down and that to me is like yeah yeah ai can't do that ai can sound if you've heard the gorilla monsoon ai podcast that's been going around there it kind of sounds like gorilla but it's just got no heart and soul to it so i i'd prefer yeah uh, to, to use another example of the new indiana jones mm-hmm. game coming out the trailer like that dude is bang on perfect harrison ford impression that's mm-hmm. the best harrison ford impression i've ever heard because it's again the cadence it's the yeah. kind of tired but also intense and at the same time it's you know ai can't really do that jake good to see you glad you enjoyed it 
Ah, uh, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Rodimus Prime, good to see you. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, glad you don't. <laughs> uh, any more final uh, Transformers Sunbow uh, episode ideas? Good zombie, good to see I don't you. know how I can pop Galactus. I think Galactus. I'm done, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Doesn't get Anything? much bigger than that. No. Yeah, if we could, if they could have uh, incorporated the fridge and the Sarge together, I would have loved that. I think the Sarge fridge and the Sarge against sort of... Galactus. Yeah, just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's only putting putting a Cobra clutch. I could not... just see a Sergeant Fridge standing there. <laughs> yeah. Galactus, you're outnumbered. <laughs> that's not that's not fair to Galactus. Yeah, it's not... <laughs> he's calling Unicron for backup. Of <laughs> Unicron. <I don't> know. <laughs> no, the fridge is here too. It's not just, yeah. it's the fridge, too. No, not and a Grimley. fridge. The fridge. Yeah, the one from Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> I think the tagline should have been, or his quote should have been, I'm going into defrost mode. <laughs> <laughs> this was a good ending, too, actually. It's kind of funny that the return of Optimus Prime kind of felt like a show ender. And then yeah. the following yeah. year, they ended the show again. But the Transformers then, had done that a, a few times. They ended their show a few times, like yeah, Megatron yeah. falling into the lava. Well, that's the end of this story. And then he blows yeah. up in space. Well, that's the end of the Decepticon. <laughs> <laughs> it just seemed like a recurring thing. Uh, yeah, same here. Let's uh, let's use those Larry Hama comics and and send Mister Hama a yeah. check. The perfect yeah. stories are already there. How many episodes can you get out of that many comic books? Yeah. yeah, we've talked about that in the past too. Like they're there. Why aren't? Why aren't, isn't Mister Hama getting a check? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like you don't. You don't need a story inspired by his comics. They're there. They're perfect. They're Netflix stories. He wrote them yeah. thirty years before Netflix was a thing. They're there. Just like First Blood, the novel by David Morrell would be a perfect Netflix series. Larry yeah. Hama, Larry Hama, especially the special missions. If if you were to do like a one off unconnected 10 episode season or something like that they're they're perfect so but it, it won't happen because that would make sense <laughs> that would make too much sense uh and transformers were all are one hmm they never did do that where the autobots and decepticons kind of um saw eye to eye and made peace that actually is a really fitting end i think to the transformers yeah. eon so you saw so you the thing that united them. If What's you that? can't unite over Unicron, then there's no there's no uniting. The the comic tried to do that. Like that was the whole point of the comic. It was a really good storyline where it's like we the only thing that can stop Unicron is either the Matrix or us combining. And the Matrix yeah. got lost, so they were like, we only have one option to combine. And they gave it their best shot, and they got obliterated. Uh, and then the Matrix shows up. Luckily, like, whew, good thing that thing showed up because. Yeah. And plan B didn't work, so let's stick with plan A. Imagine but, if imagine if plan B did work, because you could end it and have like Megatron and Optimus sitting in a cafe on the corner of some some street in uh <laughs> and Cybertron just having a coffee, laughing talking about, about the, the old, old days. days. <laughs> Remember that time I tried to rip out your optics? <laughs> <laughs> yes, as I recall, I <laughs> killed you two minutes later. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Oh no, the whole Unicron thing. Oh goodness. I crushed you with my bare hands. Well, I'm glad we're past <laughs> that the <show>. now. <laughs> really not good, guys. That's the show. That's the last season. <laughs> just sitting and yeah, you know, it would it would be a nice message just to say, like, even the most I, Prime would be up for it. Like that original Peter mm -hmm. Cullen Optimus Prime absolutely would be like, yes, we're we're always ready to bury the hatchet with you. If we will just stop conquering, you know, yeah. <laughs> stop destroying and conquering. So um, that could that could have been the set the 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 new season of the symbol where Unicron's not really destroyed comes back and they have to combine maybe, forces because the Matrix depleted, yeah. right? So you they gotta have, have to, Unicron they have to look like the Death Star too, where it's he's missing yeah. a chunk. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then, and this, just imagine your mind is like Optimus just driving in, kicking off whatever Unicron cronies are around, transforming, getting ready to battle. And then Megatron transforms into the gun and 
Optimus is holding, just blasting all these guys left and right. You could also do something with, if you incorporated what we talked about earlier, where it's part of it is the journey of Galvatron back to Megatron. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Psyche overcoming the Galvatron psyche. Because what is Galvatron? A creation of Unicron. And mm. then they're fighting Unicron again, and it's not looking good. And Megatron says something to the effect of, ah, but we have an inside man. And through the metamorphosis, mm -hmm. maybe with the help of the Matrix, imagine this, give me that. And uh, maybe it's been filled a little bit. We're combining all the ideas here, but the Matrix has a little more wisdom in it. And uh, can you imagine Optimus handing the Matrix over to Megatron and saying, you know, I've got an idea and using the power of the Matrix, Megatron, who has a link with Unicron still, you are still my slave. And Megatron goes, well, the connection goes two ways. And he uses the Matrix and Unicron goes, Rawr! and Megatron is now bow to me, slave. Can you imagine the image Whoa. of this tiny megatron bow and unicron like you can't really kneel in space mm. maybe he grabs yeah. the moon and puts his knee on the moon and he's like, ah <laughs> and that's they megatron stuns him for a moment you know in order to do that and that's like the moment it, it's so much more powerful <clears throat> than a handshake prime giving the matrix to megatron to imagine if they both took a handle and opened it together oh there you go oh, there you go that's perfect. Wow. Yeah. That, that's the Which unifying. Fit. That's an iconic unifying shot of them yeah. together. That's burying the hatchet right there. And finally, they are all one. And yeah. then the standard for that song Unicron, playing. That's Unicron the moment could, right there. Uh, Unicron could take away the Galvatron body, turn him back into his battered Megatron body. Oh. And, you know, just with Man, what little that's... strength he has left, open the Matrix yeah. with. Optimus Prime. I'm, having a, I'm having a rock moment right here. So if the whole thing is the journey to get back to Megatron and Unicron does that and Meg Megatron is back in his shattered, broken form and there's Optimus Prime looking at this battered Megatron and, and one of the final lines is, good to see you again. You know, like, Ron, yeah. I never thought I'd say this, but it's good to see you again. <laughs> And yeah, that's that's how you do the the face turn. You know, that's how you turn the heel into a face. Yeah. Oh, emotionally emotionally charged. I promise, no more conquering <laughs> <laughs> today. The Matrix <laughs> makes him sane. Interesting. Yeah, lots yeah. of possibilities. Yeah. Matrix is this magical MacGuffin that can do whatever you need it to do, uh, and the Joes could show up to continue that crossover with the real MacGuffin <laughs> and open it. <laughs> yeah. You just have every, everyone can be friends and Duke and Cobra commander are grabbing either end of the MacGuffin device and opening it <laughs> and just let's ruin the whole thing. <laughs> let's yeah. just take a beautiful <laughs> moment and just make it silly and stupid. Mass hysteria. <laughs> yeah. Cats and dogs living together. <laughs> and we'll give the last comment here to Bob. Uh, Prime tells Megatron, I would have waited an eternity for this. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes. you catch him in San Diego, folks. He is a stand up comedian. <laughs> uh, That's a great yeah. ending. On the... Super fun chat, guys. Thanks a lot for joining me tonight. Thanks for having me. Lots of fun. Everyone in the chat, uh, live chat there, thanks for joining. Much appreciated. Um, Darth, uh, Darth Digital and Rodimus Prime, Bob, saw Hans a little earlier. Uh, lots and lots of names. Wow, geez, we've had a great turnout tonight. Just scrolling up the chat here. David, thank you for the super chats. Much appreciated. Uh, thanks, everyone, man. It's been, a, it's been a blast. Ra, thank you. Have a great night. Awesome, guys. All right, hit and end stream. And thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Yo, Joe. See you Wednesday night for the Piper stream. <laughs>